I want to talk about intermittent fasting. This is something I've been practicing for about four years and it's really powerful stuff. It's something that a lot of people may not understand or maybe a little afraid of because our entire lives we've been told you have to eat every three hours or your metabolism is going to slow down, which is not true at all. There are a few different ways to kind of approach this or look at it, but one of them is through the lens of evolutionary biology. So our ancestors were in periods of feast and famine, naturally. They had to find their food and sometimes there was no food. So our bodies are actually made to be in fasted states. They are so well adapted to the fasted state that we are highly, um, we're, we're highly adapted to burning our fat, like going to our, our stored fat when, when we don't have more calories coming in. So when you hit the fasted state, which happens after mm, 16 hours of not eating calories, you go into ketosis and your body goes straight to the stored fat for energy. So if you're in a fasted state and you haven't eaten in, let's say 15 hours going for a run, you're gonna be burning fat instead of the readily available glycogen that is there when you're eating all the time, all day long. Um, so this is a really good way to burn fat and stored fat, which you want to burn because it's just extra dead weight on your frame. It's not good. Like I have some that I want to get rid of. It's, it's not healthy and it actually leads to more disease than a lot of other factors. So fasting is disease preventative and it contributes to longevity. You can research this. It's very much science-based. Um, I think a lot of people are afraid of it because there are cultural phenomena around food. Um, the, the thought of being hungry or feeling deprived is very scary for a lot of people. And I would not recommend fasting for anyone who's had an eating disorder because it can be very triggering. It's not for everybody. Not every body does well with fasting. I have found it to be basically a hack where if I do, let's say a 24 hour fast once a week on Tuesdays, which is the best day to do it in my opinion, that means I can eat more junk food and drink alcohol and kind of skip a workout later in the week because you're gonna keep that in balance. And the other thing that's neat about it is, let's say you're doing a 16-8 fast, which is considered the warrior diet or the warrior fast. Um, I typically do a little more of a, it's 16, I do like 18 hours where I don't eat and then I eat in the window following that six or eight hours. Um, when you get to that point, it's, it's actually really simple to do. So let's say you have dinner Monday night at 7 p.m. And then you don't eat again before bed. You go to bed, let's say 11 p.m. By 7 a.m., you've been sleeping all this time. You weren't hungry because you just had dinner. It's a few hours before bed that you have to not eat. Big deal. Uh, 7 a.m., you've already hit the 12-hour mark. Let's say you wake up 8 o'clock, and then that's 13 hours, and you just have to wait another three hours before you have your first meal. You can have coffee. You can have sparkling water. Tea. Tea is wonderful. Coffee is um, pretty acidic, but if you love coffee and you need the caffeine, then just drink coffee. It doesn't matter. It's under five calories. It's not going to break your fast. So it's easy. So you just, you know, go from like 6 or 7 p.m. till 11 a.m. or noon. You break your fast then. Done. And then you've done your body wonderful favors on a cellular level. You can heal on a cellular level when you're fasting because you're not taxing your body with digestion. Digestion is one of the most demanding activities in the body. So when you're in a fasted state and you, and you get to that state, often uh, you're able to eliminate free radicals and it actually does prevent cancer. You can read it, uh, search it, find videos on it. I'm not a scientist. I can't speak to it quite as well as others. Um, so it's disease prevention. That's the main thing. Weight loss, fat loss is a happy side effect, but you can use this as a way to lose fat. Some people do. Um, the other thing, uh, which is to dispel a, a couple myths that we have all been fed for our entire lives by the fitness industry and a lot of magazines that don't know what they're talking about, is that um, your metabolism will slow down when you don't eat every four hours, which is nuts. There's a brilliant nutritionist and um, fitness expert named Lee Peel, P-E-E-L-E. -E -E. I've been listening to her podcast, reading her books for years. She has one called Starve Mode, totally debunks this, check that out. Uh, the other thing is 
when people oversimplify um, weight, weight loss and kind of maintenance into calories in, calories out. That's all it is, simple formula. It's not. Our bodies are a lot more complex than that. It's actually more of a two compartment system. So think of it as a fridge and a freezer. That's how your energy is stored. There's a TED talk on this. I'll put a link to that. Uh, there's a very intelligent man who kind of cre created this, this schema for thinking of our bodies that way. And uh, he explains it better than I, but essentially when you eat food, that's your energy, uh, you put it in the fridge, it's readily available. So you can take it in and out and you get your calories, your energy from that. But if you don't eat what's in the fridge, it goes into the freezer for later use. That's your fat storage. And there are even different kinds of fat, like brown fat, brown fat and uh, gray fat, which are like one's harder to burn. But the bottom line is the stored fat is in the freezer. You have to burn and use up what's in the fridge before you're allowed to go get that old energy from the freezer, your stored fat. Like the other thing that's nuts is stored fat. It's not, it's not some mythical um, substance that your body makes. It's not a new kind of cell. It's actually literally composed of the fat that you ate. So like a hamburger from 1999, little molecules of that burger are on your ass. I have cake from 2006 on my ass still. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I had some notes here. What else did I want to mention about this? I'm sorry. This video might be getting a little long. Uh, okay. So the diet and fitness industry is a $167 billion a year industry and they make their money on selling you ab rollers and cereal bars and telling you you need to eat every four hours and get a gym membership and buy, buy these products, buy these magazines. And they confuse everybody. No wonder we're all fat and confused because you've got six different, very competing um, ideologies coming in from the left and the right. And nobody wants you to know that the most effective free diet is intermittent fasting. Obviously I'm a big proponent. And one of the reasons is for productivity, uh, you will never feel more alert and focused and just head down into what you're doing than when you're in a fasted state. Once you get over that nervousness of feeling deprived and hungry the first few hours, you realize, oh my God, this feels great. I'm so focused. I'm, I'm, my acuity is high. That's because ancestrally, when we were hungry, we had to get very alert and focused. And those who survived were those who performed well in a fasted state, found food. So apply that to the modern age. Basically, fasting is extremely natural for our bodies. They're made to do it. It's very beneficial to your health. Weight loss, fat loss is a happy side effect, but I look at it more as uh, a longevity technique. And so now I do most days, let's say five a week, I try to do at least a 16-8, like I did it this morning. And if you get your workout in right at the end of the fast, like the 15th hour, you're gonna burn even more fat and it's almost I'm not sure the percentage, but it's much more productive of a session than when you're burning something from the fridge from those available glycogen stores. Um, burn up the glycogen, go into the fasted state, get in that, I think it's ketonic, ketosis state, and then you're burning stored fat right off your ass. The hamburger is going to be gone. It's awesome. Um, again, not for everybody, and be careful if you've ever had any eating issues because it can really trigger some feelings of deprivation again. Um, so check out the links below. This is just one thing I do for health, but um, I've, found, I've found it to be really impactful and it, it lets me be really loose on the weekends essentially. So check back in tomorrow for the next installment of the vlog series.